Okay, we're back and we're looking at a rotations situation here, um, which includes the moment of inertia for a stick that's a little bit different than what we normally see. Usually we're looking at sticks just straight, um, nothing weird about them. They're, they're all nice and uniform. You know, the mass is evenly spread along the length of, of the stick. Um, but what happens if you, you don't have that? What if you have something more like a baseball bat? It's a good example, where it's skinnier on one end and it gets thicker and wider, more massive as you get further and further along towards the thicker um, side of the bat where you actually hit the ball. That's something that we could call a non-uniform linear mass density. Okay, let's figure out what that means and, and what to do with that. So normally, um, in, in something like a, a physics C class, uh, when you look on the equation sheets from your book, you'll see this kind of definition for moment of inertia. It's written down as an integral. Okay, the integral of, of x squared dm is, is often what you see written down. So when, when you have kind of a normal stick, what we're used to doing, and that this integral kind of tells you what to do in a sense, the dm represents, um, think of that as like a little point mass, a little sliver of, of the stick. And in our case, if let's say we're going to spin the stick around one of its ends, okay, the, the left end where, where the axis rotation is, if we took a little sliver, which is at that little blue line, some distance away from the axis rotation, it has a little moment of inertia um, equal to, or point mass, the distance squared from the axis times the mass of the little chunk. Okay, that, that's what the dm represents. Once you have a little bit of inertia for a little sliver, if you wanted to get the total moment of inertia for the stick, you'd sum up all the little inertias. Okay. That's what integrals do. Now the trouble is we, we can't evaluate this integral as is because the variable is actually the x. That's the thing that changes as you go from sliver to sliver, not the mass. We have to get a dx to replace the dm if we ever want to evaluate this term. This is where we use a linear mass density. We, we, use, we, we use a ratio, okay? But instead of mass per volume, we use the ratio, the total mass to the total length of the stick, okay, kilograms per meter. For a uniform stick, like a normal stick, um, th this is a constant. And so we could do it for the whole stick or we could do it for a little sliver of the stick. This ratio, mass per length, is what we call lambda. That, that's a common symbol that a lot of people use for, for this ratio. Okay, And so um, we can say that, um, that the dm is this lambda ratio, mass per length, multiplied by that little distance of the sliver, that little thickness. That's what we can substitute into the integral. Okay, there's that ratio, mass per length, or that, that's the lambda, times dx. If your axis rotation is at one of the ends, we want to you want to add up all the little slivers, all the little inertias from one side to the other. So from zero to L would be the bounds of this integral. And if you worked it out, this is where we'd get um, a final answer of one third mass times the length squared. That's the moment of inertia that we normally would see for a stick if you if you spin it to around one of its ends. Okay, what if things get messed up? <laughs> what if we get tricky? What if instead of like a nice uniform stick with, with the same thickness all the way down the length, what if we had almost like a wedge, kind of like a pizza slice or a baseball bat kind of thing? I'm using an example from the 2018 um, AP Physics C exam where they have a rotations problem and they, they give us one of these non-uniform linear mass densities. And they define the lambda. Remember, lambda is, is the ratio of mass per unit length. They just give us a, a function now instead of just a number. 
Okay. Let's see what to do with that. So if we're, we're going to set this up exactly the same way. Um, if you want to find the, the moment of inertia for, for this weird looking stick, the definition doesn't change. And we, we still have this. Um, but now we're, we're going to go back and remind ourselves the DM, okay, the, the mass of a little chunk of something, is this ratio, it's this, this linear density, lambda, multiplied by a little bit of length. Okay. So what we can do in this particular case, substitute for that dm lambda times the little bit of thickness of one of the chunks of the stick. Okay, so imagine you've got a little sliver some distance away from the axis of rotation, which is at, at the left end. Um, that, you know, it's a certain distance from that axis. It has a little bit of mass and a little bit of thickness. What's the mass of that sliver? It's this function now. It's not just a number. But we have to substitute with whatever little lambda function they give us. In this particular problem, it's, it's two times the mass over the length of, of that stick squared multiplied by x. That's lambda. Now we multiply that by the little bit of length or thickness of our sliver, and that would be the mass of that little sliver. We want to add everything up from one end to the other, from, from the axis of rotation, which is at our zero point, all the way to the end of, of the stick. And what we end up with, let's, let's work this out now. Um, oops. If we do the antiderivative of all this, uh, we, we have some constants, two times the mass over L squared. Now the antiderivative, we have an X cubed. Its antiderivative is one fourth X to the fourth. And we have to evaluate that from zero to L, okay, the, the whole length of the stick. When we do that, um, a factor of two is going to drop out. We have mass over 2L squared. And then we, we plug in the L. So we have L to the fourth power. Plug in the zero and subtract it. So minus zero to the fourth power. And we end up with one half mass times the length squared. Oops, and that should be the inertia of this of this weird looking stick. So I got that off center a little bit there. In the problem, notice that's what they wanted us to do in the first step is to evaluate and get one half ml squared. Show where that comes from. Then they go ahead and they make a wheel using three of these weird sticks as the spokes. And then we have like a, a thin hoop or ring um, as, as the wheel. And they want to um, figure out what's the total moment of inertia or rotational inertia for that system. Okay. So here's the picture that they give. And we're just going to add them up. Um, mass of a ring, or, or the little hoop that they gave, is mass times radius squared. Well, the, the radius of, of this wheel is the length of these sticks, if you were to look at the, the problem. So ML squared. And then we have three of the sticks. And so we just have to have three times the inertia of one of the sticks. And we can add those together and um, we'd have a total of five halves ml squared. So when you have compound systems, when you have multiple objects together um, that, that you're gonna rotate or spin, and you wanna look for those moments of inertia, um, inertia is just like mass. 
right? It, it's a substitute for mass when you have rotational motion. And so we just add those together. Okay, so you can do all this, the same kinds of things that we're used to doing, but the focus of this and, and what hopefully you're going to get from this is how to use this, this weird linear mass density when, when they give a function. It's all the same thing as what we're used to doing when finding these inertias and doing these integrals. Um, it's still the, this, this lambda, okay, your, your linear mass density multiplied by a length, that product tells you what the mass of that little length is of your material. If they happen to give a function like they did in, in 2018, we just take that function and we're, we're placing that, we're just substituting within this integral um, and then working it out from there. Okay. So that's, this is just one, one example of, of what this means. Uh, the only thing, other thing I'll mention here um, you know, now, now that you know what the moment of inertia is for this system, you, you can go ahead and start making like almost like standard kinds of rotations problems. <clears throat> um, for example, they're talking about if, if you were to apply a force tangent to this wheel, tangent to the hoop um, over some time period, they want you to figure out like how fast would it be moving, okay? Um, this is a case. You know, if, if you know, force is tangent to something round, uh, that's going to actually produce a torque. And it's going to make, <clears throat> it's going to make the, the little hoop and wheel um, spin faster and faster. Um, a constant force is going to produce a constant torque and a constant angular acceleration. And so we have all of, all of those types of ideas. Um, you can do things like have, have the, the system roll up or down a hill <coughs> and, and maybe try to find speeds. If it rolls down a hill, how fast is it going at the bottom? Or in this case, you could have it rolling on, on the ground and it rolls up the hill. How high does it go? This is a case where we, we want to start using energy. Okay, so you can still do things like um, that the kinetic energy at the bottom of the hill, if it's rolling without slipping, okay, we, we now know what the moment of inertia is for, for the system in the previous parts. And if it rolls without slipping up the hill, all of that kinetic energy at the bottom turns into potential energy at its highest point where, where it all stops. It's all, all the same types of things that we're used to doing with rotations can be done once we understand how to get those inertia values. Okay. So I, I, hope, I hope this example makes a little bit of sense. And you can see, make the comparison of what you're used to doing for the stick. Okay, with, with this, this ratio of mass to length, okay, that the linear density or lambda The mass of a little chunk of something is the linear density multiplied by the little length of, of that material. And that's what we used. That's the idea that we used down here in order to figure out what to plug in for the dm in the moment of inertia. Okay. So the linear density multiplied by that little bit of length. Okay, so that's that's what this uh that this type of problem means and, and how we can deal with it. A little bit of calculus, um, but you know it, it, it makes things a little more realistic as well. We do something like this for, for things like a baseball bat. So I hope that helps. Hope that makes a little bit of sense. And until next time, uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>